I'm uh, Paul Probst, the inventor of the blind sight devices for uh, uh, dogs and horses. And this video is about tearing down the blind sight S. Uh, that's the blind sight S. This is the new blind sight uh, that came out in March 2015 for small dogs between uh, 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 10 or 11 pounds up to about 30 pounds. Uh, you, if you need to tear down on a, on a, for the unit for larger dogs, you want the, the tear down of the blind sight unit. That's the regular blind sight unit. This is a special one for small dogs. So um, I'm going to have the camera come in really close onto the tabletop here, and we're going to go through the complete tear down like you would for a repair. And I'm going to mention something about repairs in case you need them, and even to uh, changing changing the rings. If you look, we have uh, these rings are one inch rings. We ship these. Uh, they may come with either one inch or three quarter inch rings on them, but there'll be extra rings uh, uh, both sizes in the spare parts kit. Okay, so if you decide you need to change them out, um, they're in here. And if you tear, if you tear the neoprene liner, there's a neoprene liner in here. There's a complete set of clips and everything. It isn't that there's anything wrong with this stuff, but when you put this, this is made for a ten year life. When you put this around a dog's neck. Stainless steel on stainless steel, after a while, you're going to either rub through the ring or rub through the clip. One is going to go through. They're, they're not going to last 10 years. So we provide these pieces so they can be easily replaced in the field and uh, so that the unit can live out its 10-year uh, its, uh, 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 design life. Anyway, I'm going to put this down. We're going to have the camera come in close, and I'm going to show you how to do it all. So... As I, I've said in some of the other videos, try to work on this always one way, facing you, you know, the rings towards you or rings away. All right. Uh, I really advise, I'm going to try to do this from your point of view. I advise, advise you doing this rings away from you. So, so uh, 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 this would be the, in, in, the uh, orientation you'd have it in when you're going to work on it. Tear it down. The first thing is, just like changing the batteries, is to remove the four screws. I'm going to do that right now. The case is Zamac, which is a very strong uh, aluminum alloy. Uh, they use uh, uh, one, a nearly identical alloy for M16 receivers, that type of thing. So it's uh, partially aluminum, zinc, I think magnesium and copper is what it stands for. Okay, so we've got the screws out now, and you notice the top pops up. And that's because all the neoprene that's in there uh, is, stays resilient, and it just pops the lid out of the way. So we're going to take the lid out of the way. So there we are. Uh, there's the guts. Now, we don't, when we get past this point, we don't want to power it up. So after we get the lid off, the next thing is to dump the batteries out. I'm going to hold my finger over, over this stuff here so I don't dump out other things yet. I'll dump the batteries out. And you can short, you keep the batteries separated because you can short across the battery like this by just leaning in against another battery. You really don't want to do that. You can, if you get two batteries, one leaned on one like this, one will short the other out. So keep them separate. Okay, so now we got the batteries out, so the power's off, and uh, we don't have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, about any damage due to electrical stuff. Uh, the whole thing is in kind of a neoprene tub, and the neoprene tub is cut down on the side, on this side here where the transducer is, and it comes all the way up in the side with the battery holder. So take the battery holder side and pull both sides and pull the whole thing out. Now, so there's the case. There is... The battery holder, this is a real gut, so we're going, to, we're going to take it out of the, I'm going to take this out of the neoprene uh, liner. So there's the neoprene liner, there's the insulator that goes between the circuit board and the transducer, okay? And there's, there you are, there's, the, there's this all right here in my hand, this is all the electronics including the battery holders right here. You have these two pieces of neoprene and the case, that's it, okay? If you need... Uh, our larger uh, unit, you, there's connectors, and you can use use connectors to to change, swap out the front. This one, if you're going to swap out the front, you literally uh, somebody will have to solder a couple of wires here. But it's not that, that it's you know for anybody who can handle the soldering, it's not that difficult. Uh, the transducer may not last the whole 10 years. Uh, we will swap it out for you, replace it for you once during the life of the unit, so you know uh, at no charge. So here we are. Now, what, what's left? The rings. Okay, we're down to the case. Let's say we wanted to change these rings for the smaller ones. 
You see that we have the larger ones here. We are on the unit. They're one inch. Here's the three quarter inch. Let's just pretend for the moment we want to change that out. We need this hex key, 960 fourths. This is a 964 hex key. Comes with the unit. Put that in a screw. Okay. And I'm going to change one just, just to show you how it's done. And this wrench that I'm using on the nut is 1132. It's 1130 seconds. Okay. It's 1130 second wrench. So we take this all the way off. And yeah, you could use a socket wrench. It really doesn't matter. But it's 1130 seconds and 964 for the hex key. So now we take this all off. Let me get the tools out of the way. So here you have the clip with the ring. Uh, there's the screw, washer, nut. All right. So I'm going to take this ring out. And I'm not actually going to change out the rings. I'm not going to open that package. I'm just going to put this ring back in. You just kind of snap it out. You snap it back in. All right. When you go to attach it, uh, most people seem to want to put it this way with this, with this piece facing out. This piece needs to face in this way. In other words, this part of the clip needs to go over the case, not alongside it. You see how these are in instead of, instead of out. They're in. So I'm going to press the screw back in the case, put that on, put the washer on, put the nut on. Now, these clips have a little bit of slop. You can slide them front to back a bit. Try to get them so that they're the same distance. If, in other words, if you have about a quarter inch here, uh, let's just, as an instance, let's say, let's try to make it a quarter inch there. That's so that the unit will be balanced when it's on the dog. If one is too far forward and one is uh, too far back, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with a unit that's set on, at an angle on the dog. We don't want to, we want, don't want to have that happen. So here we are tightening the screw down. I've got about the same spacing from the edge of the case to this. And maybe this one could scrunch back a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to slide it back a little bit more. It's, it's a little farther towards the front of the case, towards this rim here, than the other one is. And I'm just going to, I'm going to even them up. Okay. I'm going to slide this one back a little bit farther here. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Oh, yeah. Then, ah, tighten it down good. Get your hex key out of the way. All right, now we're ready to put the whole thing back together. We don't put this in. And then put the stuff in, okay, to put the guts in. Literally, what we have to do is take this piece, the cut down part here, we see this cut down, that's where the circuit board goes. We'll put the circuit board there, okay. The high part is where the battery holder goes, and there's a set of wires. You have, besides the red and black, you have another set of white wires that go around this little red thing in the battery holder. We want to tuck those behind the battery holder, in other words, between the battery holder and the neoprene, so they're sitting down in this gap here, okay. So now we've got the, uh, let me get this out. The edge of this plastic here has got the same cutouts as the neoprene that you want up there. You want the circuit board up against the battery holder. So it's, you get this little piece of neoprene sticking out that goes between these screw bosses here. So in other words, we have this part here with the two cutouts that goes here. This part with the two cutouts that goes here. And we just slip this in the case. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now. What's the next thing we need to do? This part keeps there being any possibility of a short between the back of the transducer and the circuit board. So we put this directly on top of the circuit board and let the water, wire just kind of wide up about around it. Now batteries have got to go back. Again, we take the batteries. You want the side with the plus symbol on it. In other words, the flat side of the battery. You got a flat side and a kind of a rounded side. Take the flat side of the battery, that goes down. Make sure that it stays down. It didn't flip over when you put it in there. There's one, two, three, four. All right? And they've all got them to round side up, flat side down. I put this back, and you see a little notch. You may or may not show up in the video. There's a little notch right here. That's made for this wire. You lay this in here. Make sure the wire's in the notch. Make sure these wires going to the transducer are in the case and not on the edge where they could get cut. As I mentioned before, we use a silicon wire, a silicone wire, uh, for environmental reasons, and um, 
it's ni nice and flexible. It's a really great wire to use for this, but uh, it, it's it's easier to cut than the common PVC. So you want to look in here, make here, make sure that wire's not sticking out, right? Now the case is gonna the case top is gonna stick up that way. Or the case front, I should say, is gonna stick up because of the neoprene is holding it up. We got to compress the neoprene by squeezing down, holding it in your hand. Put two opposing corners in, two opposite corners like this. A couple of diagonals, if you like. Put the screws in. Oops, come on guys. Get the screws down in there. Okay, put the other two in. I have no idea what's going on inside this. <laughs> While I'm doing this, you may hear a little, uh, it's, it's uh, been thundering here, so you may hear a little thunder while I'm doing this. Okay. Uh, tighten the screws. You don't, don't have to break the screws, okay? It won't help them stay any tighter. Just get them reasonably tight, and if you want them to stay in, as I mentioned before in other videos, and I think previously in this one, put a little piece of Gorilla Tape or some other high-strength tape over here. Don't use packing tape. Don't use scotch tape, and... Really, you'll gum it up if you use ordinary duct tape. It doesn't last long. This is maybe 10 years. Duct tape lasts outdoors in this maybe a couple months. Uh, but you don't have to. We have a lot of them out there. People haven't taped them. Some people like to tape them. You'll see them in some of our videos. You see like a black stripe here. That's Gorilla Tape. Okay? Put away your 964th wrench. You may need it. Okay? And now you're set to go. Now, what's the test left? We have to know if it's running. Okay? Let me check. A tick every half second. It's a very faint tick, but it's there. So this thing's ready to go. At this point, we put a collar through here. Put that collar on the animal's neck. And as always, that collar does not get used for a leash. It only holds this unit up. And that's it. You're done. That's a complete teardown and breakup. And the only, like I said, repairs you're liable to have to do is to replace the rings. Or somebody might have to resolder a new front panel with a transducer in it. If you need that, um, most of the time... Uh, you send it to us, we'll send it back, and uh, we won't charge you for replacing the transducer, okay? One time in its life, we'll, we'll take care of that. Um, if you want it done really quick, if your dog's freaking out, you might want to pay the extra, you know, we do standard shipping, you might want to pay extra for, for air. But that's about it. Um, and again, if you don't get the results you want out of this thing in 30 days, you know, you're not to, uh, you can send it back to us, and you're going to get your money back. Uh, all but $25, which is uh, for our shipping and handling. And uh, 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 although so far we haven't had one back. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for your time. That's the complete teardown and, and uh, reassembly for the Blindside S.